Hey, it's Monday night. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest tonight is Joe Lesh. Down there in Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. He doesn't talk like that, though. No, he doesn't. He I'm, talks like a regular middle-of-the-road dude because he's a professional voice actor. That's what he does. He can turn the knob up and down right. depending and a, on how south he wants that's to go. Right. And a coach and a musician and all sorts of stuff. We're mm-hmm. going to talk to him in a little bit about all the stuff that he's doing, like coaching in the booth camp. Anyway, uh, anything, and we're going to talk about tech? Yeah, a little bit of cool gadgets I gleaned from CES 2018. Cool. And uh, we have, uh, we're have we going to look at a new feature. Well, not necessarily a new feature, but a feature in... Um, Dollar View. Uh, in Dollar View, we're going to look at Audition, a great little thing, a little trick I learned. Anyway, it's all coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop now. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2Gogo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success, the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by voiceactorwebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. That was a really nice dissolve, man. I know, it works. Wow. I'm Dan Leonard, by the way, if you haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yeah. All right. All right. We got a crowd tonight. Yes, we do. We I got know. audience. We love having a live audience here. Yeah. It always helps. It raises the energy level. Instead of imagining what all of you are doing out there. Probably some in your underwear and whatever is going on in your living room. Uh, anyway, uh, tonight on our show, we've got all sorts of great stuff. Our guest is Joe Lesh, uh, mm-hmm. who's a voiceover coach, and he's doing all sorts of cool stuff that we're going to talk to him about and, and what's best for your career, at least from his point of view. And That's he's right. probably right. Uh, and uh, we've got some tech stuff. Uh, you're going to talk a little bit about the latest tech update. Yeah, stuff that is mildly relevant. Mildly relevant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the stuff from CES, yeah, in other CES words. Stuff. Okay. Uh, right. And uh, and we also have, uh, we're going to do a thing with DaView tonight. Where cool. We, I have a great thing. Plus. Because yeah, we've got questions. We have, we have a couple of questions yeah. and I have a couple of demonstrations. I hope we have time to do them all because there were some great questions tonight. Anyway. Awesome. All righty. Well, Always then good. let's get things going here. It's now time for... And now, the voiceover extra, VOBS News, the latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news, brought to you live. And here it is for January 15th, the voiceover extra VOBS News. Silence. Okay, if you were watching pro football this past weekend, your voice might have been a little bit on sidelines today. Or at the very least, your voice came into the mic with a raspy soreness. Yeah, it was fun, but uh, people have a tendency to overdo it when they're, they're watching football. Yeah, in fact, speech path- uh, specialist Dr. Ann Oderbeck would advise you to stay as quiet as possible. Now, 
when the mic isn't open. Shouting leads to vocal fatigue, and she notes in a new article on VoiceOver Extra, and she writes in the article, Silence is important when your voice feels fatigued. Don't force yourself to make sound when your vocal folds. And here, clearly don't want to. You know, colds and flu are really running rampant this time of year. Create another crucial need for vocal rest. So when you're coughing a lot, the throat becomes sore and you sound hoarse. Let your damaged vocal tissue rest so it'll heal faster, she urges. Talk only if you're being paid to. A second important time for silence is simply when you relax. Mm, you do relax, right? Yeah. And urges us to, to do so. She says, let silence be your friend by spending time each day in silence or relaxation. It's been proven to make you more productive. Now, you don't have to chant, um, or become a mystic. Just slow down and tune out once a day. Check out this article now on voiceoverextra.com, where you'll find thousands of additional helpful articles and resources. And hey, it's all free there. So go read it. All right. Yeah. We're trying to get a, a, a speech pathologist, ear, nose, and throat otorhinolaryngologist on mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. One of the really good ones. Yeah, we've had several on, and yeah. this one comes highly recommended to us. So yeah. as yeah. soon as she's secured, available, we will let you give know. you the name. <laughs> that, that's the show you're not going to want to miss either. Yeah. Anyway, what's going on in tech this week? Well, you know, this is the the the, the calm of the, between the two major shows. There's There was CES last week, which is the Consumer Electronics Show, in Las Vegas. It's massive. It's overwhelming. It's insane. I've never been. I just listen to all the tech pundits who say, we don't go anymore because <laughs> they're, so, they're so tired of going. It's just a madhouse. So I've been just combing through one of my favorite tech news sites. That's called The Verge. The Verge. At TheVerge.com and looking for things that are somewhat relevant to you guys, maybe. And um, one of those is um, there's a company called Matthias, and for those Apple users, we know there's a few of you in the audience. For those that are tired of the fact, if you hate using wireless keyboards, like me, I don't like wireless keyboards. I find them to be f annoying, one more battery to charge or replace. And why does your keyboard really need to be wireless? It's not moving. It's not a mouse. You don't take it with you. Why does it need to be wireless? So if you really miss having that nice, flat, wire, um, Apple-looking keyboard that's beautiful and plugs in with a USB cable, there's a company now that finally makes one. And it's got a few extra cool tricks up its sleeve. The company is called Matias, M-A-T-I-A-S. And their wired version of their keyboard is looking, it's looking pretty sharp. So... I would recommend checking it out. I don't know if it's quite hit the market yet, but it is it's on its way and it's it is it is good looking. It's a good looking keyboard. Does it hide fingerprints a little bit better? It or? looks well, it's it's a matte black finish. I can see that much. It's yeah. entirely black aluminum. Um they make a version for Windows also, but the PC one, I mean the Windows the Mac version, I should say, looks like you would expect. It looks like the classic um, Mac keyboard that you know from the last, you know, six, seven years. Um, and the, the other thing is it's not that expensive. Yes, it's a little more pricey than you might think for a wired keyboard, but that's because it has a RGB backlight. So the keyboard is backlit and you can change the color of the backlight to whatever color you want. So, you know, for those that like to pimp out their studios, this is a pretty slick piece of kit right here. So the Matias... A uh, wired keyboard looks like a really cool little thing. Um, other little cool gadgets that look somewhat relevant, especially for the road warriors out there with the new MacBook, uh, the new MacBook Pro, any computer that has USB-C, you can get a one terabyte USB-C flash drive. That is like the size of like your pinky. I mean, it it is unbelievably small. So if you like ultra tiny, super portable stuff, the SanDisk uh, USB-C now available in up to one terabyte. You mean like you need a tweezers to put it in your computer? It's or? pretty small. Mm. I mean, it is about as it's as big as it has to be to contain a USB-C jack on the wow. end, which is pretty small. Pretty small. Here's for those that don't know what USB-C is. That is a USB-C port on the end of my phone. It looks kind of like a, a, oh yeah, there it is. It looks kind of like a lightning port on an iPhone, you know, in terms of its size and shape. But you're going to see this port on a lot more stuff. 
I don't know if Apple's iPhone is going to go to USB-C. We're all thinking it probably will because the MacBook and the MacBook Pro are USB-C. They're throwing USB-C on all the new iMacs. It's showing up on everything. Eventually, you're probably going to be looking at an iPhone with this same port. This is the port to rule them all. This thing, USB-C is wicked, wicked fast. It's backward compatible with USB, Thunderbolt, Firewire, DVI, HDMI. It carries everything you could possibly want on a single port. So it's likely going to be the thing that everything runs on eventually. But anyway, you can get their super sexy little one terabyte drive for a price... A little, little pricey, about 300, 350 bucks. But again, that's one terabyte. So if you want super fast, super portable storage, that's pretty cool. Um, the last thing that's, you know, again, all this stuff I'm talking about is a little on the premium side price-wise. But, you know, some of us have the, the need and the want for something like this. LG has a 5K monitor. So you know the, all the, the Mac, iMac 5K. Yes. A lot of you guys have those. Um, if you want a companion screen to go right along with it, well, they have uh, LG has a 34 inch 5K Thunderbolt 3 screen. So, this is a screen that will plug right into one of those Thunderbolt 3, wow. also known as a USB C port on the MacBook Pro and the MacBook and a few of the other machines. And it's pretty kick butt, man. This thing is 34 inches wide. And again, it's ultra wide screen. So it is beyond your typical 1080p monitor. Um, so this thing looks fun. Uh, if you got the means and you have the space, it is so choice. Cool. You definitely want to look and check it out. So that's some of the stuff from CES. But next week, we're going to at NAM. the end of next week. Yes, we're, NAM. We are going to the NAM show in Anaheim, and uh, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, we're. <laughs> And we're covering some of the vendors that you know that you know new stuff's going to be coming from. Neumann, they're announcing the U67. Woo! Spendy, baby. But if <laughs> everything I'm talking about tonight is way expensive stuff. Right. I don't, sorry about that. Uh, but the U67 is coming back, so we'll get to see that and talk to them about why they relaunched this microphone. So cool. that should be fun. All righty. Well... Joe Lash is coming up in just a couple of minutes, but we've got a big segment on voiceover tech, which is one of the prime reasons you come to see us here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and that's coming up right after this. VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called VOBS. And a lot of people are like, V-O-B-S? What is that? That is BS about V-O. And I love V-O. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Meow. Snails like it, too. Before time began, there was V-O-B-S dot TV. Watch. Or else. You're still watching VLB. All right. Hey, you know, will 2018 be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email. Dramatically up your level of success. I want you to go to a special URL. VO2GoGo.com forward slash... V-O-B-S. That's VO2GoGo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Join the hundreds of voiceover practitioners around the world who have decided to really invest in their career and, and make the best out of everything that they can do using VO2GoGo's great program from David H. Lawrence the 17th. It's a great online program. Mm -hmm. So, once again, go to VO... Or, I'm sorry. It's VO2GoGo.com forward slash... V-O-B-S. Let's make eight, 2018. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. 
Like our name implies, VoiceActorWebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back. And it's time to talk a little bit of tech. Mm -hmm. and we've got a couple of questions tonight, but I want to start off demonstrating a cool little trick that uh, was thrown to me because we were talking about dividing up individual files a couple of weeks ago on Twisted Wave. And I said, yeah. well, it's not easy to do on Adobe Audition. But then I got I got a, an email from someone saying, hey, do it this way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So let's now go to Stretching the Limits of Webcasting Technology. Voice Over Body Shop presents Dawview 2018. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Dawview and uh, let's see here. Let me get my program up. And uh, if Sue could just get that behind us, I'll show you a really cool trick mm -hmm. for separating files in Adobe Audition. Uh, now, usually you'll put a marker somewhere. And if, if you look, I mean, I've got a bunch of markers that are set along here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, say, if you're, if you're doing a spot or you're, you're doing a bunch of different takes, and say they want three different takes, and say you do here, I did six takes. Yeah. And pick the three best and put a marker in front of each one of them. And now, you know, and then you could, you know, one way of doing it is like, well, highlight it and then copy and paste it and that sort of thing. But here's a better way of doing this. If you click on the marker at the top of the marker mm -hmm. and right click or control right click on your pad here, um, it will, there's a little thing called convert to range. And if you click convert to range, mm -hmm. it suddenly makes that marker a range marker that you can spread out to a certain length. And then it covers that area. And you can do that. Say I only wanted to do uh, these three so I could, Again, convert to range, stretch this over the entire file over here. Do a little bit slower. It's so, it's kind of small to see on that, you know, that screen. So right. show us. Yeah. And then say I want to do this last one here. You click on there, convert to range. Look at that. And then if you can see this wirecast does something really funky whenever you do a drop down menu yeah. it automatically yeah, yeah, yeah. clops in on that little drop down menu it's really cool really right, fun well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway you can see that what i'm doing here is yeah. i'm i'm moving that over there yeah and then once you've got the three individual cuts that you want mm -hmm. all you have to do is go to file export and export audio within range markers and it says what do you want them as well i want to throw them in that file and i want to make them mp3s uh-huh and the name the name comes right off of the file ranges right. use marker names and file names right. gotcha so you you name the you name the markers the way you normally would yeah in audition mm -hmm. and you know using markers over on the uh in, in the uh the in the drop down that over here yeah and then just all you do is hit export and those three files, not all of them, will be individual files in your in your folder when they should be in the music here. Boom. And there they are. Uh-huh. How do you like them apples? Cool, man. And while we're in here, can I show you guys a trick too? Sure. Just, just something just reminded me of this little extra tip that a lot of people may not know in uh, Audition. You know how it makes all those annoying PKF files? Yeah, I just .pkf. Delete them all. Boom. Never do that again. Okay. Oh, Here's good. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to, you're gonna go to, uh, I believe it's data. No, okay. it's media and disk cache. Okay. And you're gonna go to save peak files. Oh well, there you, you go. go. No, oh, I don't yeah. need those hey, freaking, freaking PKF files. I'm not going anymore. back to that file. And it's you will never see here. PKF files again. So absolutely. A little bonus tip. Yes. That's cool. I didn't know about those that range thing. That's that's really useful. Yeah. 
I'm, I was, I, I got an email. I'm like, oh, now was it, is it as efficient as using the markers in Twisted Wave to divide up ninety files? Probably not quite, not as, quite as much. A little more clunky. But for something like this, say where you're doing, you know, three takes of something, this thing works really well. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to raw output of many files for the like e-learning, Twisted Wave still seems to be the champ for that. Absolutely. Would you agree? I totally agree. Do you agree. use Twisted Wave for all your e-learning stuff? I use Twisted Wave for all my e-learning. Well, I use Twisted Wave and I use Audition. Yeah. Uh, but that's just because I know how. You do the recording and Audition? And I know. I record in, I record record in, Twisted, Wave. in Twisted Wave because it's really good for long format yeah. stuff. And you and posted it. I, I, and I, I save it as a wave, throw yeah. it into Audition, do all my editing in there, yeah. and then I can throw it back. Now people say, oh, it's too hard. Right move file yeah it's pretty easy yeah that's that's really tough guys you can drag and drop stuff yeah. right in either one it'll open right up okay well question from gerard mcguire he says mm -hmm. i've been using twisted wave easy intuitive and powerful but i noticed many are singing the praises of reaper mm -hmm. so i'm trying the test version mm. it's complicated and not intuitive <laughs> yeah. and has me uh, it has a bit of a steep learning curve you can say that again yeah not that i mind a challenge and love learning something new mm -hmm. i can see it's very useful for music and video with audio but does it offer any benefit for straightforward voiceover mm. you know reaper a little bit better than i it's it's like it it's a multi track a digital audio workstation that's got more bells and whistles. As I like to say, it's a control room for a nuclear reactor to control a hamster yeah. running in a cage. It, it can make Pro Tools look rather pedestrian. Wow. In terms of its really? amount of drop down menus, oh, options, Christ. and settings. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty insane. <laughs> Um, I mean, there's a lot of studios that are so fed up with the way Avid does business and their business model of making you pay every year and right. all this stuff that they're moving to uh, Pro Tools. I, I Don't quote me on this, but I believe Amanda Rose Smith on our show said that um, Audible yeah. has gone to Reaper. Really? Yeah, I think all of their internal studios have gone to Reaper. Um, probably from an economical reason, it made sense for them to do it. But Reaper is does it really does everything, and even does stuff that Pro Tools won't do. Right, um, and isn't but, prone, to, of course, to all the updates that you have with Pro Tools, and then updating all your hardware and stuff. You pay once for it at sixty bucks, or you pay two hundred dollars if you're someone that's really making money. Like if you're a profit making voice actor, and you're making more than I think it's twenty thousand a year. It's an honor system model, which is pretty unique, um, but. The question is, what does it have for the standard voice actor that you really need? I really can't record, play. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I, it's 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 extremely flexible. Um, I, there's a voice actor who does his own blog. He calls him he calls himself the Booth Junkie. I've seen his stuff. He is a Reaper nut, and he's got oodles of tutorials on Reaper on, on YouTube. I recommend that maybe you check out his starter videos on how to get Reaper up and running for VO. And just spend a little time on there and see if you find uh, the charm of, of Reaper. I, I don't really see it personally because because when there's better and easier tools, I tend to gravitate toward them, you know. But Reaper is pretty cheap, and uh, once you buy it, I've never seen them charge for an upgrade ever. No, like that's, Twisted that's Wave. significant. Like Twisted Wave, you know, you buy it once and you're pretty much set for life. I've never seen an upgrade fee. Um, it does punch and roll. It it does you know it does multi track recording. You you can do multiple takes on a track. It, it's it's crazy. You can customize them. You can customize the entire interface. You can customize the menus so that it only shows the things you need with scripts. I mean, it is a hacker's like heaven. Hmm. Uh, but it is it is pretty heavy duty in terms of its functions. Yeah. So yeah, but is it good for voiceover? If you know. How to use it? You know how to use it. If you're really, if you watch a lot of these tutorials and you get really comfortable with it over ten years, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting a thumbs up from Tom in the studio. He he, he likes it. It's it's um I've I've used it from time to time. I used it when it's when it's one of its early versions, just because I needed to do a live band recording and I needed a multi track track doll like on the spot. It I think it's twelve megabytes. Wow, it's like it's a tiny tiny, tiny program, program for something that does a lot of stuff. It's it's really quite remarkable. So um, Reaper.fm, that's their weird domain if you want to go uh, dabble with that. So Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, I had another question today. So, oh. so it was, this thing was rolling through Facebook. Somebody had a Mojave 
306 or something like that. Maybe 301. A 301, 301. Fat 301. Or? Yeah. And, and, and he had bought a 103. A TLM okay. 103. Notice how the names are similar? 301, 103. 103. I'm not saying there's any coincidence. Maybe. Well, who knows what those guys at Mojave are up to. But anyway, he, he sent uh, he sent me a couple of, you know, a, a, a one with the Mojave and one with the, uh, with the TLM 103. And there was a comment I made about, well, I'm not using the 103 so much anymore. And he's like, well, if it's, it's fallen out of favor, I just bought one. And he says, and I think that my 103 makes my voice sound harsher. Mm. So I listened to the two files mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, I couldn't really tell. I mean, I could Splitting tell hairs. it was, it was slightly different and I didn't find his voice more harsh with the one Oh three. It sounded okay. very clear and clean. A lot of times it's how you're listening to the playback Yeah, and, and you're used to hearing your voice in a certain way. Uh, but I, to me, and that's just me. Someone on the other end doesn't really care unless you're using a really crappy USB mic mm -hmm. where there's hiss in the background and you're undermodulating and stuff like that. It's just the sound that you put out. They're listening to how you interpret the copy. And yeah. people tend to obsess over this thing about microphones. And if you're spending more than $300 on a good microphone, it really shouldn't make a difference. That's the mic you have. And if there's any adjustments that you need to make, little tiny adjustments, right? Yeah, a little notch in the EQ here and there, a little de-esser here and there to to, to clean it. I, it depends on who you're working with, but I I get clients saying my my client, I get voice actors telling me that their client complains of occasional sibilance issues, things like that. And pretty much any modern condenser mic, they all are pretty bright. Yep. And if you have a tendency towards sibilance, then a 103 or any of these mics will amplify that sibilance a little bit. Yeah. So if you can't coach that out of your voice and you haven't learned how to control your sibilance, which it can be done unless you have some sort of physiological or dental that. or issue, Relax. you can, you can learn to, to reduce your sibilance from, from here. Um, but if you're still having major problems and processing can handle a lot of that. Right. I, I don't, Mojave's great stuff. I've met the guys over there. Um, Royer labs is actually their partner wow. Wow. parent company whatever they actually david royer of royer microphones designs the mojave mics and, and those are like the high-end high-end yeah mics. those are the Royers ribbon, are the ribbon, ribbon mics. mics the really good ribbon yeah mics, they're yeah. really he is he is an amazing guy but i think that the idea of the mojave is that they're designed to be a little more a little bit less bright mm. they're going for a little bit i don't know smoother top end or maybe not an overly bright top end so that might be why he likes it better but if some guy, some producer is listening to this on a pair of laptop speakers, they're not going to, they're not going to be able to tell Heaven the help difference. you. If the producer's listening on laptop speakers, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Well, but, that, uh, and that's probably the majority of the time. <laughs> so, you know, if you're doing stuff for the pay to plays where they're hiring you to send out a finished file that they're going to throw on their website or their YouTube channel, it's got to be ready to go right out of the computer. Right. There's nobody doing post on it. Right. So just make sure, it, you know, it sounds the best it can sound, you know, deal with those issues before you send them out. Companies like Pandora, mm -hmm. they're very, very picky oh, about they're the sound very that you picky. send out because yeah. they ain't touching the audio. I don't think anyway. Well. Don't you do some stuff? For, I, I do a lot of stuff for Pandora. Yeah. And uh, What do they ask for from their specs? They, well, it's pretty standard, you yeah. know. Uh, it's got to be waves, but uh -huh. it's got to be 44.1, 24-bit. Right. And properly modulated, proper mic technique yeah. with good acoustics. Gee, yeah. where have we heard that before? Yeah. And so they have no problem with my stuff. Yeah, because you, you're, you're, all, you're, right. You're using a four sixteen these using days. Using a four sixteen, yeah. You know, well placed, good technique, good, good voice, good acoustics. You don't need to do a whole right. heck of a lot. Right. And and they just I send the stuff in. As someone once said, you know, when you send stuff to Pandora, no news is good news. Right, right. They don't, they, if you don't have to redo it, you know, yeah. they, they, you know they're not going to contact you. And then a check shows up in your, you know, in your bank account a couple of weeks later, and you're like, "That was easy." Yeah, I've had several clients come to me saying, "I I'm doing stuff for Pandora, and they're not quite happy with what they're getting. So we need to step up our game. They need to, they, they, the, they yeah. need to talk to one of us. Yeah. So if you need help with your oh, home yeah, studio, that's a good segue. Thank you very much. Uh, if you need help with your home studio. George does this. How do you get in touch with George? Oh, yes. I'm available at my website. That's George the... Where are you pointing? I'm, po uh, I'm pointing to where the lower <laughs> third's supposed to be. 
<laughs> uh, you can find me at georgethetech.com or for the geeks that like a nice short URL, it's also georgethe.tech. Where can they find you? They can go to my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm-hmm. There, there it is. Yay! Right, right there. And there's George's thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my title. I know. That's Wait, your that's name. Bundle. That's your name. Okay. Anyway. So if you need help with that, give us a buzz, uh, send us a wire, you know, send a money order. We'll be able to fix you up real good and make sure that you're sounding pristine. Mm-hmm. Anyway, someone else who sounds pristine is the one and only Joe Lesh, and we're going to be talking to him right in a few minutes here. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. I'm supposed to talk about one of our fantastic Fabulous sponsors at Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and many, many other useful studio tools, even down to the lowly talkback button. Yes, they make a talkback button for Pro Tools, something that Pro Tools doesn't have. Um, but if you want to use their most popular utility, that's <coughs> Source Connect, that is the ultimate way to connect your studio to any other studio in the world that's producing voiceover today. Chances are they are using Source Connect because it's been around now for over 10 years and it is fantastically reliable it's just an industry standard by this point if you're if you're getting ready that up your game to the point where you're recording voiceovers from your home studio and being directed live you want to have this tool in your toolkit really important you can sign up now for a 15-day free trial at source-elements.com and you can get a again 15-day free trial and just you know when you when you pay if they ask you where you heard where you heard about it, just let them know you found, they found out about it at VOBS. We'd really appreciate it. All right, we'll be back really shortly here with Joe Lesh right after a very, very short break. Old-fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. At good old fashioned. Joe Lesh is an award winning spoken word producer, voice actor, and coach. Joe has produced over 500 audiobooks, voiced dozens of national commercials audiobooks, corporate narrations, and cartoons for the Disney Channel. He produces the Baby Looney Tunes sound books. And Joe teaches voice acting throughout the country with VoiceOverExtra.com and in Nashville for Alan Dysert's The Actors School. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop the one and only Joe Lesh. Welcome, Joe. Hi, guys. Great to Good see to you. Here. <laughs> Turn my uh, speakers down. Here a little there bit. you go. There we go. Hey, it's great to yeah. see you. I mean, you, we, hey, you we pulled we, me off the chat, man. I was on the chat line here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. L- l- let's let you go back to the chat. Yeah. That's where yeah, it's we'll happening. Just, we'll, we, we can wait. That it's, is actually I mean, where the no fun problem. is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so you've been, you know, you've been working well, you know, with a bunch of different companies, but right now you're with our good friend John Florian over at VoiceOver Extra, and uh, right. you're doing your booth camp online, both beginning in a couple of weeks. Tell us about it. No better place to be than with John Florian. Absolutely. 
Yeah, he, good man. Uh, yeah, Booth Camp Online. You know, I've been doing Booth Camp Online or Booth Camp for uh, a number of years. Uh, well before I uh, joined up with Edge, and I was with them for uh, two and a half to three years, and and now I'm back with John, and it's really great to be back home because uh, you just couldn't work with a better guy. Now, Booth Camp Online. Uh, we decided after last year that uh, classes weren't quite filling up in, in various cities. And uh, that's over the past few years, it's kind of slowed down a little bit. But the online activity has been incredible. And so we're going to take advantage of that. And we've already got uh, a couple people or a few people already signed up for uh, Booth Camp Online, which is commercial and narration, a three-week course, uh, three consecutive Tuesdays beginning January 30th, and uh, it's looking pretty good. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to be doing these classes, and over the past few years, it's just been commercial and narration for Booth Camp, but now it's going to be, um, once we finish this, we'll, we'll be looking at character voice development for audiobooks and animation uh, corporate narration, e-learning, and we're just going to just do the whole gamut this year. All right. Well, it sounds sounds like fun. I mean, now, you usually do this live, but now you're going to start doing it online. Mm -hmm. And how, how are you going to handle that? Well, I think it'll be, it'll be just fine. I, I was doing a lot of online coaching when I was with Edge, and uh, that's what got me used to doing online coaching. And I really enjoyed it. And I find that I can be as effective... Um, through Skype or, or Zoom, as I can uh, live. So, uh, yeah, I've, gee, I, I think I directed about 50 or 60 demos for Edge while I was uh, with them, and uh, that was all online, too. So I'm pretty comfortable with it. Cool. Now, you also do Mojo Friday. Now, I see the, the promos for that all the time, where you're, you know, it's Mojo Friday. What is Mojo Friday? Uh, on the first and third Friday of each month, we release uh, helpful tips for voice actors through YouTube videos. Um, so there's there's just a number of different titles there. You can go to our YouTube channel. Um, I, I sent you that link earlier. Yeah. I don't know if they've got it to post up there or not, but you can go to the YouTube channel and look at all the videos we've put out so far. But you can see the new ones on the first and third Friday of each month. Helpful voiceover tips for voice actors. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've got it here on my computer. If you can go to uh, the uh, back to my computer there, so we can take a look at some of this and see what goes on with this. Oops. I'm sorry, was that a question for me? No, no, no. We're just uh, we're just working with our floor director and oh, making sure oh, we get okay. everything in there. <laughs> yeah, it went away. It went away. Well, it went away. That is not good. <laughs> you can try adding it again, see if it reappears. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, it's MacBook Air. The MacBook Air. Yeah, it's just a black, empty sh shell of a shot. There well, it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, well, here. here we cool, there it is. Welcome to Mojo Friday. Come on. This is Joe Lesh from Booth Camp. Today's voiceover topic is procrastination. Creativity is a habit, and so is procrastination. Procrastination is the one thing that gets in the way of productivity. It can put a damper on your creativity, and it can even cripple your business. Procrastination is resistance. Maybe you're scared or bored, or maybe you have negative feelings about a project. Anytime we make an activity a should, a must, or a need, resistance builds up inside you. All right, let's come back. All right. Interesting. It's always important to have affirmations and things to remind you what you're supposed to be doing, right? Sure. Yeah. Half the time we forget anyway, you know, we know what to do. We just forgot. So little friendly reminders are important. Absolutely. Uh, now you've also got a book coming out. Everybody writes a book. <laughs> what's well, what's going to be so great about this book? It's called well, Positively it Speaking, Jumpstart Your Voiceover Career and Your Life. Yeah, it's a motivational type thing. And I was inspired by uh, Norman Vincent Peale. I read a book many years ago. It was called The Power of Positive Thinking. And I thought, well, gee, what a, 
a great title that would be for a book, The Power of Positive exactly. Speaking. So a lot of it is uh, founded on his principles, and it's just having that uh, uh, positive, motivational uh, attitude and moving forward through, through all of this uh, stuff that we call voiceover to, to get to where you can be a successful voice actor. All right. So what, what's gonna, what, what sort of things are you talking about in there? Well, um, I've, got, I've got a number of different uh, areas. Like, for example, uh, there's um, one area in my book where I ask, I ask the readers, um, you know, are you a yes person? Because uh, many people lead off with a conversation such as, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I, you know, facts can hit us pretty hard. A fact leaves you thinking, well, that's just the way it is, and nothing can be done about something. Uh, you know, if that's a fact, then it, it's sort of uh, it, it would make you a, a no person if you if you were that that of that mindset where you felt like uh, you know, well, that's fact, that's just the way it is. But a yes person will find a way to well to get around that so called fact. The yes people are problem solvers, go getters. And not about let, to let that fact get in their way. So you need to be a yes person. And your voiceover career will lead to a successful future much faster than you ever imagined. I believe by following a few simple rules that anyone can revolutionize and energize their own life. First, you need to be uh, bold. And uh, once you're bold, forces will come to assist you. A uh, timid person will cut off from that power, but when one proceeds boldly, uh, a flow of power will soon have you back. Uh, second, laugh in the face of adversity. Uh, don't go through life saying the forces are against me. More often, people are defeated by not so much the facts of the situation as they are by misunderstanding those facts. Now, this is inherent to, inherent with um, uh, well, with every problem, every problem that life offers. And I truly believe this. Now, um, third, you know, you need to picture in your mind positive, uh, positive outcomes. By envisioning great things, you can actually cause great influences to play a role in your life. And fourth, you just need to love everybody. I know it sounds difficult, but it's really not. And life is really too short to live it the other way. Are you a yes person? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how about you, Dan? Are you a yes person? Yeah. You know, when somebody says, do what I say, how high? You know, they say, jump. <laughs> how high are you going to, you know? Is, is that anybody in particular? No, no, not anybody in particular. But yeah, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is I've always found, and, you know, and, and our, our good friend uh, Bob Sauer is always talking about this, how about loving your clients and doing what they need done for them and don't complain about it um you know unless they really mess up in which case you're very diplomatic about it and go i understand i'll get it done for you and that's 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 how you get your clients to come back and stick with you and that's that's True. a really important yeah, thing that's right mm -hmm. uh you know opinions are like your rear end <laughs> everybody has one all right <laughs> um yeah you know, it, it can be a little daunting when you first get into voiceover. Yeah. Not everyone is going to be supportive of your career, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're going you're gonna to yeah. find people with lots of different opinions. Just go on oh, Facebook sure, and sure. it's like. Hey. There'll be people who will discourage you by saying things like, uh, it's a tough business. Yeah. Uh, there's not enough room for another voice actor in this business. You just have to remember that opinions are like rear ends. Everyone has one. Yeah, just got to get used to, you know, you take what's best, you know, mm -hmm. and you learn to separate the wheat from the chaff and what works best for That's you. That's true. And, and it's important that you find that support group or that support person that can help you along. You know, ask a friend to listen to you, preferably one that su is supportive of you. Yeah. Ask them what they think of your new career choice. Not everyone will... Uh, well, not everyone you ask will be supportive. Yeah, they may not so even know what you're talking about. Encouraging person who lifts you up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, do you ha you have a group in Nashville? We do. TiVo, the Tennessee Voiceover Exchange, 
And it's a fantastic meetup group. We meet on the uh, third Tuesday of every month. We have different uh, speakers that call in and uh, come come in through uh, Skype or Zoom. And uh, we do courses. Sometimes I'll do a course. Maybe it's character voice development or uh, commercials and narration. And we'll do a workout that evening. Uh, I think Tom Deere is going to Skype in tomorrow night at the uh, TiVo, uh, the TiVo meetup tomorrow night. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, Tom's great, great when it comes to running your, your voiceover business. So you're getting all the good people in there. And, uh, and it's very educational. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Joe Lesh in Nashville, Tennessee. We're talking about the stuff he's doing, like Booth Camp and his new book, Positively Speaking, Jumpstart Your Voiceover Career and Your Life. And if you have a question for Joe or anything that has to do with voiceover, we can have a group discussion about it. Uh, throw it in the, uh, the chat room. Jack Daniel is in there, and uh, he is relaying those fabulous questions back to us so we can talk I to Joe I always about want to hear from the bass players too he's oh. also watching the Facebook comments tonight oh all right super well done, multitasking yeah, so you, you can <laughs> you can put it in Facebook or on our on our website VOBS.tv even better um yeah. one of the things yeah I know that 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 you've been teaching is something that is vital to everybody and that is becoming conversational uh, it's one of the biggest hurdles for voice actors. Now I, I, I struggle with it. The reason is, is that I tend to talk very formally anyway. And so trying to just, you know, get yourself into the mind of, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. Hanging out with the dudes. You, you got to hang, hang out, out with you know, the guy you sure. want to have a beer with, you know, who's yeah, still, the there he is. It's yeah. still yeah. sounding like, you know, you don't you, have marbles in your mouth. Right. Exactly. <laughs> You know, because I'm careful sometimes, about that. Sometimes uh, I get some of the uh, local, uh, the local uh, commentators, the uh, news commentators, uh, people from uh, radio and television, and they're used to delivering their news and and their uh, advertisements in a certain way. And so when they come into my class, they'll deliver it like that, like they were at work. Uh, so it's it is very important to become more conversational. And um, that's one of the biggest hurdles for, for new, new voice actors in particular, is becoming more conversational. So they'll start to read, and they'll, maybe they'll end the sentence. Like a lot of the millennials today, they'll end their sentences with a, a high, higher pitch on the end of the sentence. That's what we're doing today. And, and it's, it almost becomes a question, like the last, the last syllable in, in, the, uh, in their sentence. It almost sounds like a question. And so it's, it's getting people to uh, level out. Now, a lot of people don't realize, I say a lot of people, uh, voice actors don't realize sometimes that, that that first sentence, your first sentence in, a, let, let's talk about a corporate narrative. That first ser- sentence, if you don't capture the listener's ear within that first sentence, then you've lost them. Uh, if, if it's in a demo, uh, then they're off to the next demo because you didn't capture them in that first sentence. Now, let's say that the corporate narration was um, at Tractor Supply. We're not just a corporation. We're, we're in the people business. Let's say that that's the first sentence. So at Tractor Supply, we're, we're not just a corporation. We're in the people business. All right. So if you're going to begin that phrase, I suggest that you pick out a pre-sentence. You can make something up. Now, the first words start with at tractor supply, but whatever you say before that is going to help you get into the conversation. Of course, I want to know how many people am I talking to? Am I talking to six people? Let's say I'm talking to one. So John comes in and he sits down at my desk. Okay, so now it's a personal, more of a personal thing. John, I'm really glad that you're here today. I'm glad that I can share this stuff with you because you know, At Tractor Supply, we're not just a corporation. We're in the people business. And so now you're having a conversation with John, and you're not just saying words for that first sentence, but now you've got a way to capture the listener's ear. You know, and it's vital that people get a hold of this. You know, it's it's voice acting, and you got to get yourself into that place every time you step in front of the microphone. And when you get in front of the microphone... You tend to become something other than what a lot of people are looking for. How do you, is there a way that you, the a technique that you use to make yourself a little bit more comfortable and 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 are able to make that transition from hitting record and getting in front of the mic to 
hey, I'm the guy you're having a beer with. Well, I do. I do always start off with tongue twisters. Yeah. Like she stood in. Oh, let's see. Oh, she, st- she stood in the doorway of Burgess's fish store shop, inexplicably mimicking him and welcoming him in. Um, and I'll I'll do that with a cork in my mouth. I'll, I'll say that like three <laughs> times with a cork in my mouth to help me to enunciate and to also to use those mouth muscles that we don't think of on a day to day basis. Um, that helps me to loosen up a little bit too. And of course, sometimes I balk tackwards because balking tackwards, lethal path, sneagling kicker, faster lace off. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so that it, those little mind teasers like that help you to have fun and to get used to get you into a script where you can have fun with it. Well, yeah, and that's the point is to to have fun. Again, we're talking with Joe Lesh about some techniques for making your voiceover business a little bit more successful through your voiceover technique. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your background and then, uh, because you've done a whole pile of different things that have led you to this point. All right. Sure. Um, well, I, I grew up out there where you guys are right now. I, where I neither would, of us uh, grew up, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. We've all flip flopped. <laughs> <laughs> there was a movie, I think, something like that, Trading Places. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in Covina, about 20 miles east of L.A., and I studied acting at the Pasadena Playhouse. Agnes Moorhead was my acting coach. Oh, and, uh, Darren. Samantha's <laughs> mother on Bewitched for all you millennials out there. Oh, and she falls out the window with the, in that Bogart movie. <laughs> I think it was the one in San Francisco, uh, Dark Passage. Dark Passage. Oh, my goodness. Talk to me like I'm a millennial. All right, because I, I don't <laughs> See, know. See, we watch reruns, too, don't we, Dan? Yeah. Oh, I've <laughs> got to watch Bogart. So, um, yeah, growing up in Los Angeles and playing music out there, I, I played in the Hollywood Bowl uh, in 1966, and Karen and Richard Carpenter won first place in the uh, jazz combo division, and my band took first place in the uh, vocal group division. I went off to uh, Vietnam, met my best friend there, and uh, he and I are still playing music in the road crew today. And the road crew is the, we are the official musical ambassadors to Route 66. Yeah. So we travel Route 66 every year. We'll be in Shamrock, Texas in July. So come and see us, Dan. I know that you're, you'll be somewhere around that area about then. I oh, think. yeah. I'm always, I'm always in Texas. Uh, anyway, you know, we've actually got some video of your band. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, and it, it's on my computer, so so you can actually. We'll try this again and see if it's working now. Oh, okay. Uh, um, there it is. Joe Lesh's band in Nashville. Oh, isn't that great? Just pick up <laughs> Thanks my, for taking that, Dan. I, I pick up my iPhone. We're sitting in that this great barbecue restaurant. I mean, the food there was like, you know, and the, wait, the waitress has to come around and explain every little piece of the menu to you. It was, uh, I wish I was there, man. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. That's why I'm glad you, I was really glad you shot that because I didn't get to be there. So yeah. watching that live on Facebook, it was as close, you know, it was yeah. about like being there. Yeah. And a lot of people were suddenly watching and you were broadcasting live. So, uh, sure. and, but that was some good. Our YouTube channel too, and check out some more of our videos. Um, also roadcrew66.com. That's our, our, uh, website right because you're you're like dead everything you're about is like route 66 right which doesn't yeah, really exist yeah. anymore i've, I've got a, a fascination with route 66 of course we traveled when i was a kid born in st louis we go out to california and when we moved to california we'd go back to st louis on route 66 and uh i wrote uh well we've got three cds about the history of route 66 and we're redoing those this year and this we're going to change the title of it it's called stories from the mother road told by the road crew. Wow. Right and those uh, selling museums and gift shops all along the mother road. Yeah. Have you guys played at the end of the route down the pier at Santa Monica pier? No, not yet. Oh, <laughs> man. You, book you book it, George, and we'll be there. <laughs> Actually, I think the way it works at the pier is nobody books anything. It's, it's book. It's just busking. Show up. People yeah. are just <laughs> sitting on the pier and playing. You just have to beat out the, the guy with the sign saying, you know, Jesus saves yeah. and you gotta get, you get a good spot. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that down on the pier. It's actually kind of exciting. Oh, hey, I want to mention one thing to sure. you guys. We're going to be on uh, WSM Radio. That's Ooh. the Grand Ole Opry station on the 24th of January from 3 to 6 p.m. Central Time. And the theme is Route 66, the Nashville Connection. So you can listen online at WSM Radio. No, WSMonline.com. WSMonline.com. So, so All right. Yeah. And well, also one yeah. more thing. Yeah, one if more you thing. Go to uh, voiceoverextra.com. You can see uh, when Booth Camp is coming up in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And uh, sign up. Join me. All righty. Well, if again, if you're just joining us, our guest is Joe Lesh, and we're talking about all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're a busy guy, obviously. Uh, you know, when you when you you're trying to have a voiceover career and you're teaching and you're doing all this stuff and you have a band, how do you fit it all together? I want to hear a little bit about your actual studio after we come. We're going to too. talk about okay. that, and we're going to answer yeah. your questions, which you can send into the chat room right now. Uh, and Jack Daniel will get that to us. So we'll be right back with Joe Lesh here on Voice Over Body Shop. Do not go away. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right. You know, we've been doing this show for almost seven years that's right we just had our 300th show together as, yes. as co-hosts yes it's amazing where mm -hmm. does the time go mm -hmm. and i probably had as much hair then as i do now <laughs> but uh one of the things that uh, is really important to us is our sponsors and our best sponsor not that there's anything wrong with our other sponsors we're fabulous we love having them our oldest our sponsor. oldest sponsor not only because he's been with us the longest but he's also the oldest he's guy the oldest. uh <laughs> <laughs> there at the invention of voiceover uh, Harlan Hogan, yeah. uh, voiceoveressentials.com is his business, and he's got everything you need for your voiceover studio. And uh, we have several fabulous examples of it here, right here in our studio that we use every single week. We like, make our show using his stuff because it sounds good. So if you think it sounds great, you know how good you th <clears throat> we think it is. Yeah. But we, ha we have this guy here, the Harlan Hogan VO1A mm -hmm. voiceover microphone it was designed for voiceover that's right it wasn't designed for for uh you know celine dion or or justin timberlake to make their albums it was designed for doing voiceover mm -hmm. he's got it tuned perfectly for that and it's a great microphone at a great price point and the only place you can get it really is at voiceoveressentials.com now i will say this about this microphone do say when it first came out i had an opportunity to a b test it against the venerable Neumann U87 at Voice Tracks West, actually. We put them both up in the same studio, A-B comparison, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say they're identical. This microphone may have had a slightly brighter top end, mm -hmm. but it was really freaking close, I have to say. I mean, if you're looking for something that's very affordable in comparison it, you're you're not going to go out and spend three thousand dollars for your first or even Why second voiceover mic. I mean, yeah. This one is a is a great alternative, yeah. and it's low noise. And the company that makes it is MXL. They're they're manufactured over in China, but their headquarters and is, their support and their manu their repair shop right is right LAX. here in El Segundo. Yeah, and their their support is top notch. Yeah. So Harlan doesn't send out anything that's halfway no this is this is great stuff he guarantees his stuff yeah, he, does. he ships it to you if you don't like it which is virtually impossible you can send it back no questions asked great customer service great prices selection of 
everything you could possibly need in voiceover, he has access to it. But most importantly, the VO1A, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. <laughs> I feel like a fish in a fish tank all of a sudden. <laughs> Tunes perfectly for voiceover. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com. The best way to get there is to write on our website, since you're watching the show on our website, if you're watching the show on our website. Go to the bottom of the page where you see our sponsors. Click on the picture of Harlan Hogan, and it will take you right there. So go there. Buy all this stuff because it's the best voiceover stuff there is. We'll be right back. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS in VOBS.TV. And we are back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest is Joe Lash, telling us all sorts of cool stuff. Now, you had a question about Joe's studio. There's all sorts of cool stuff back there. Yeah, Joe, we, you know, we've, we've talked to you over the years many times with... We've never really spent much time looking at the studio, and I'm curious, what are some of your go-to studio elements? First of all, starting with the microphone, what do you find yourself using the most often? So right behind the glass, what are you uh, using for a microphone tonight, Joe? What, yeah, what kind I'm, of gear I'm do you have in your studio? I'm looking into my vocal booth right now. Mm -hmm. and I have a Neumann U87 in the booth. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the go-to, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of expected now, to see I, that I microphone. I used to use it right here. See, because... Uh, my my studio here this is a semi dead room yeah the ceiling has a hard surface so it's it's semi dead mm -hmm. but the booth is completely dead so you're sitting in the control floor. room right now you're not in the you're not in the booth you're in the control room i'm right in now. the control room mm -hmm. but even these walls in here these are all padded walls there's sound absorbing material like cellotex behind the burlap there and so this is a, a pretty quiet room Very but cool. not really as quiet as the dead room of course, did you, with the proximity uh, of the microphone, I can make this microphone sound like that one. Did you have a, a hand in the design of that room? Did you was that your own of your own design? I did. This is the third studio I've designed. I built a recording studio back in uh, Denver, about the mid seventies, and I was an audio engineer at that time. And I engineered for Firefall, uh, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Air Supply, and so that was my first studio I built with the help of a professional designer. So I learned from him. And I've built two studios here in Nashville. This is my third one. Very cool. All right. What else? So you got the U87 behind the glass. And then yeah, from the mic, where do we go next? What's uh, your this signal microphone path? here yeah. that I'm on right now is the Avlex AVS-79. Avlex. Yeah. That's a name I've seen at like trade shows, but I know almost nothing about that. Where did you, how did you hear about well, Avlex? It's a, a Chinese microphone. And, and what the Chinese did is they, they took the design of the U87 and built their own mic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were uh, shut down. I, I think they were forced to shut that down, but I happened to buy one for 150 bucks before they went out of business. So when, they, when you said they were shut down, that's probably because they were a little bit too good at it. Would you yeah. say? Yeah, too good at it. Because <laughs> actually, George, you know, this microphone here, the $150 mic, I sound better on this mic than on the $3,600 Neumann U87 mic. Well, you know, I got to say, with all due respect to Neumann, obviously, because their name, you know, there is, oh, no, yeah. there is means no equal. Yeah, there sure. are certainly mics that can sound better on your voice mm -hmm. than the U87. But right? you might walk into my studio and you'll sound better on the Neumann than on this one. Absolutely. So you need to check out these voices and find out which one they sound best on. Yeah. yeah. And then what's your signal chain after the mic? What do you run your mic through? I run it through a 2i2, focus right. Can't go wrong with that, yep. man. It's a, all that and sophisticated, I, expensive equipment, and it just it. goes it goes right into a 2i2. It's all you need, kids. And, and really. like Dan, I, I use Twisted Way for most of my recordings mm -hmm. that I'm sending off to my producer in Brazil or wherever. Yeah. And... Um, uh, but I, when I'm doing multi-track stuff, I'm using Studio One. I, I used Pro Tools for years and years and years, but they never kept up with the upgrades. When you they'd come up with a new uh, a new OS or something, yeah. you'd wait yeah. for weeks or months for them to catch up. Yep. And so with Studio One, I mean, it's like that. Yeah. They're really on top of it, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was the? I'm one more thing. Okay. How was okay. the learning curve? <laughs> <laughs> How was the learning curve when you went from Pro Tools to Studio One? 
Well, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. So if you know Pro Tools, it's a it's a much easier learning curve than somebody that's just jumping into a multi track system. Yeah. yeah. And my my friend Don King, he's got a studio at at his place. He's got a full blown studio with drum booth and everything. So we're recording another album now on his studio one, but he's got the thirty two channel board. Mm. Oh wow! It's really nice. All right. Well, yeah. we got lots of questions from oh, we do our our audience. Yes, people who oh, are like boy. have great questions for you. Fantastic. Starting with Fred North, who mm-hmm. asks hey, Joe, Fred. "I've I, yeah, never I saw Fred in the chat room. Yeah, yeah. I've never done characters. Never did theater. No idea on how to do characters. I got a request to do a dog character today, like we all do. Uh, and is <laughs> is that even possible for someone like me? Also, went to Joe's Facebook page. He's reached his friend limit. How can I follow him? You've reached oh. your friend limit. I've got five thousand friends. I'm oh, sorry. Geez. <laughs> so how how would someone do a dog? I mean, I've I've been asked to do a dog, and I've. I've booked gigs as a dog several times. Well, you but. know, first first of all, you you have to be the dog. So, like, uh, where would you start? Like, ruff, 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 rawr, rawr. you know, then you could kind of grow out of that. Rawr. What do you want me to? Ruff, ruff, ruff. You know, uh, just kind of start barking and uh, start saying things in the script, whatever script they've sent you, and see if you can make that uh, that vocal range w- with the barks uh, fit into the script. When I was working for Disney, I was doing the soundtrack. I was working on the music, and I was recording all the characters. And um, the evangelistic praying mantis that they had come in and record the script that day wasn't exactly what they wanted. So they said, where are we going to find an evangelistic praying mantis at this hour? And I said, yeah, yeah, the reverend mantis at your service. And they said, great, get in there and do that. (laughs) Isn't that the way it always works? (laughs) When I was a kid, I was a ventriloquist. Oh. So I traveled all over the St. Louis area entertaining people with uh, ventriloquism. And so when other kids were out playing ball, I was looking for voices for my dummies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really? I mean, that says a lot right there. Yeah. And that's, that's a really important foundation that you probably had no idea that you were forming. No idea. Right. Yeah. So and with, how, with, how handy it would come in later on. Right. With, with any, and with any handy. acting, of course. Get it. What? Handy. Handy. How oh, handy. Our, our, it must be a ventriloquist joke. a ventriloquist joke. joke. Yes. Come on. <laughs> oh. Sometimes you're a little sharper than me. But uh, a- anyway, uh, Devox asks, what are some exercises for improving one's voiceovers, especially creating and differentiating believable characters? Differentiating believable character. Uh you, you know what, what they would do with uh, Disney and also with PBS Kids, and uh, they they would bring in the uh, pictures. They would they would show us the uh, illustrations. This is what your character looks like, and then you have to come up with a voice for that character. Uh, that was one of the most interesting challenges I think throughout my whole voiceover career was being able to come up with characters for all these different characters. I think I did about 20 different voices in six different cartoons and each one was a challenge. But I think as far as exercises go, you know, there's, there's this high range and there's the low range and there's everything in between. And so, you know, the praying mantis, for example, the reverend mantis is obviously high. But then I was required to be uh, Chief Sitting Bull uh, talking about the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And so that vocal range drops way down. Many moons have passed since the white men came and took my land. Now, I would say practice with the vocal uh, octaves from here all the way down to here. Because there's characters in that whole range that you can come up with. All righty. Uh, Heidi Schneller Mena asks. Can, oh, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Yes. Can people Skype into the, uh, the TVOE meeting in Nashville? No. No. Oh. No, we're not set up for that. Sorry, Heidi. Yeah. You'll have to just uh, take, get on the bus and come in from Indiana to uh, Nashville. And that's the only way to get to Nashville. You have to take the bus. It's, it's a blue Thanks, collar kind of town. Yeah, man. it is. It's not a jet setter town. Yeah. Gwendolyn Rogers asks, when is Joe's boot camp? 
Is it online? I think you said it is online now, right? Yes, Booth Camp Online. The first, uh, for our first one, January 30th. And so you can go to VoiceOver Extra and sign up there. Uh, just register for VoiceOver Extra. You really need to be, um, you guys need to register to VoiceOver Extra regardless because they are the news and information leader within this industry. So if anything's happening at all within VoiceOver, that's where you're going to find out about it. Yeah. So be sure to sign up to them and you'll be able, you won't miss a, a booth camp. Yep. Mr. Florian is loving us tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, Jack Daniel asks, Joe, with so many voiceovers that play or sing music, can you share any thoughts on how your voiceover work has helped by your musicality? Mm, absolutely. Voice over, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, this, this book that I've got coming out, I, I actually have about 24 books that are published, uh, children's books. Uh, I've got Bible stories for kids told through the eyes of the animals. And I also have a series called The Adventures of Buffalo Biff and Farley's Raiders. And these kids travel through time and meet different uh, historic characters. But in the uh, Bible stories for kids, there's four songs in each of those, uh, each of those books. Um, it's been very beneficial for me because w if you're going to do a, a character voice in this this type of voice, then he's got to be able to sing. In uh, I think I, I think I lost my my frame of reference there. <laughs> how is you what you're talking about musicality and your and, and how does that help your voiceover? You know, I think I think the flow of a song, the flow of a song, the flow of a copy are very similar to each other. Mm. Yep. Well, Joe, it has been fabulous having you with us once again. Amazingly, he found that picture of the trio. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I love that photo. You know, where the three of us are yeah, in some country western band. Yeah, or as long as we can post it on Facebook. Who that, knows what Facebook Zero is going to do? Yeah, really. Facebook Zero. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hey, hey, we're on way, Facebook you can, now. Uh, download my app from Google Play or iTunes. Uh, Joe Lesh, the voice actor, and keep your coach in your pocket. All righty. Oh, right on. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you whenever we see you again, I'm sure. It's my pleasure. It's great to see you guys. Yeah. I'll You'll see probably... you at uh, Atlanta, right? I'll be there. Yeah. I won't. I'll be there. Okay. Okay. Joe Lush, ladies and gentlemen. All righty. Well, we're going to be right back to wrap things up into a nice, tight little package of some sort right after this message. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um, Thanks, of course, to VoiceOver Extra for all their support over all this time, too. Yeah, thank you. Jo John has a, an article every Monday telling everybody what we're going to have on the show tonight. We really appreciate yes, that. Yes, thanks, man. Yeah. So uh, it was interesting talking to Joe. He's certainly got a well-rounded pile career of work. Yes. Yeah, yeah. His career background is yeah. really diverse. and he, All those things shape a man and make someone into... The person they are today and would make him, it's all, it's all, it all makes him a unique coach now. Yeah. Know? So he's, he's fun to work with. Um, well, anyway, one of the things that keeps the show going is your donations and who are our donors of the week? Yes. We're getting a nice constant flow of donations. Some of you go, when you go to the website and you donate, you sign up as subscribers, which you don't have to do. You can just send us a little bit of money once when it, when the mood strikes, when the guest you like is on or whatever. But some of you also subscribe, and we get your donations on a regular basis. So some of these folks here are subscribers. I think all of them actually are, and that is Maria Mackis. We just got hers. Uh, Sarah Borges, 
Eric Aragoni. Every Sunday, he Eric. He pretty much hits every, every show. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Um, Antland Productions, good old Uncle Roy. Uh, Brian Rausch and Graham Spicer, some of the folks giving us a little extra boost each week to keep the lights on and... Yeah, really. And we have a lot of lights to keep on. So. Yeah. And the MacBook Pro is getting a little, it's getting a little tired. <laughs> There's the smoke coming out of it's labored of it. tonight. It's been a little laggy. Yeah, so uh, yeah, really. we'll be looking at what's next, the next phase this year. So we need all that little bit of help. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Once again, George and I started this show to shamelessly promote the fact that we are home studio engineers. And I think we've done that adequately now. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, but that's why <laughs> that's how we started it. And someone said, who's going to want to watch a show about home voiceover studios? And seven years later, here we still are. I think that was one of our sponsors. He, he still is one of our sponsors, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah. So I guess he realized that maybe we were onto something. Yeah. But uh, again, if you need help from the master here, George. Uh, you can find me at georgethetech.com. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com where you can drop off a sample of your audio. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go in there. There's a, a, a specimen collection cup there. For your audio. For your audio. I'd like to see you try something else over the internet like that. But click on that. It takes you to a Dropbox, and you can send me some audio. I'll give you mm -hmm. a free analysis. If it's something really bad, well, then we can talk about what, it, what it's going to take do. to get your, your voice sounding the way it's supposed to yeah. the way it's supposed to mm -hmm. all right uh let's see here show logs yes we have show logs and our our wonderful jack degolia keeps them logged every week from the, from the show the best place to read them actually is on youtube because they are indexed by time and if you click on those little time indexes next to all the comments it will jump right to that spot in the show it's really really handy right so it's a good place to look. And if you search in, in YouTube in the search box for any topic we've ever talked about, it's the there. comments are in the search. So it'll help, it'll help you find stuff really quick. Yeah. Like you wanted to find out what did Joe have in his studio? Mm -hmm. Just, oh, it was there. Just go right there. Jack will probably type it in for you. If he hasn't already. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. We appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, we're also on a podcast and lots of people listen to the show. As, as a matter of fact, probably the majority listen to it as a podcast. Last time I checked. More we're listening than watching. Wow. And I think it's probably because we are a long show. <laughs> we're long form. We're not a 10 minute YouTube show. We're a, about an hour and a half show. So if you like listening, you want to multitask, listen while you're doing the dishes and, and lawn, mowing the lawn or, or shoveling snow. Or driving. Yeah. Or driving. Yeah. Use, yeah using your snowblower. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, that won't be us. But if that happens to be you, then you might want to listen to us in a podcast form. You can find it on Stitcher iTunes, any podcasting, podcatching app. Right. You can just type in VOBS. Right. But you can watch the show live. Yeah, if the you're live. If you're, right. If you're listening on a podcast, you can come join us on a Monday night. We're on at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Pacific. And uh, if by chance you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, uh -huh. we'd love to have you here. Yeah. We have food. We have friends. We have a show that we actually do. <laughs> and we love having people totally distract us from what's going on in here. Uh, More and fun that way. Yes, it's 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 a lot of fun having people here. And if you want to be here for the show and you're around, write to us at the guys at vobs .tv and say, hey, I'm going to be there on such and such a date. Can I be there? And we'll check your FBI file and see if you're it's, you're, it's okay for you to come in. We'll do a background check. Yeah, very thorough background check. <laughs> and you can come in to the voiceover body shop and see how things actually are yeah. done here. We also have a survey. So if you have any ideas on how we might improve the show, or you could also let us know which of our sponsors that you tend to favor or have actually heard about on the show. That's a great place to let us know. Check it out. The survey link is up there at the top of our page at vobs.tv. Excellent. All righty. Well, we got lots of people to thank because mm -hmm. we can't do it alone. Like I keep telling no. Jacob when he's like, I have to write a whole cartoon. I got to write it all. I got to do it. You can't do it yourself and neither can we, but nope. we have to start off by thanking our sponsors mm -hmm. like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, mm -hmm. voiceover extra source elements, and also VO to go, go voice actor websites.com and J Michael Collins demos. All right. Providing uninterrupted live streams and bandwidth. Yes. They're helping us do that, and we appreciate it. And, you know, if you've got a product or service that would 
help our audience. Mm. Heck, we talk to voice actors. If you got something and you'd like to sponsor our show, we'd be happy to have you. Just write yeah. to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV. Uh, thanks to Marcy, who still is in Florida. Really? Yes, it's been a long week without her. Aww. And uh, she's helping her Man. mother pack up her house to move into a new nice condo in, in West Palm. Uh, and, uh, so she lets us be out here in the garage and she actually called during the show. <laughs> oh, I forgot the time difference. Are you kidding me? No. That's awesome. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> also our producer, Catherine Curden for finding his great guests like mm-hmm. Joe Lesh. Yep. Uh, Jack Daniel. Da, da, da. Hey, give that man a round of applause. Yes. Dang it. Uh, and a beer. And, uh, he runs our, our chat room and mm-hmm. gets us the questions and everything. Uh, also our floor producer, Sue Merlino, who is not here tonight. <laughs> yeah, she's here. <laughs> she's here. This was, this was a big night for Susan. She was flying pretty solo? much solo. I did, I did not step in and take over one time tonight. So she learned, she, <laughs> she did uh, really a, a fantastic job. And by the time many of you see this on YouTube, it will look tight because she's going to be editing the show tonight yes. and I'll be showing her how. All right. Cool. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, also Jack DeGoli again for the show notes because mm-hmm. he's a great man. And of course, the one and only Lee Penny because he likes being Lee making Penny. RC cars nowadays. Uh, I'm not that's sure that's what that's he's about doing. about what I know Lee's up to. Get to go give, give Lee a visit. Anyway, you're all thinking, who is Lee Penny? <laughs> we have got them all thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> you got to find out. Anyway, uh, you know, we're here for you. We're here to help you out. We know this is a really tough business mm-hmm. to really succeed in. And if you really want to succeed, you need good information. And we're going to try and present it to you here every week. And uh, so with that, I guess I'll just say I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Woohoo. Have a great week, everybody. Good night.